With the new announcement of the Bleach 1000 Year Blood War arc to be animated, it's still surreal to say that, I think it's time to discuss what our most anticipated moments are. Now I get it, there's too many amazing things to happen in this final part of the story for me to simply just mention 10 whole points. So, if the video gets a thousand likes, I'll drop a top 10 Bleach Blood War fight as a whole. Thousand Year Blood War arc has a reason to why it was warranted to return all these years. Not just because it's a good series as a whole and it deserves its anime to conclude, but simply for the fact that as a weekly reader at that time and even today seeing people's reactions from years later, the amount of exhilarating scenes and moments can be argued that it is criminal that these things aren't animated in comparison to what we have in a current anime age. Kubo was really going all out the best he could under the circumstances he was in to show what a war was supposed to envision. He made the cake and all he needed to do was add that beautiful little tasty icing to sweeten it up. And that's what the Blood War is. And every chapter was and still is a weekly topic. And that is incredible for a series that ended eight years ago. To keep relevancy from these rent free scenes is an achievement within itself. But before I get into our list, I have to say that I'm proud to finally present as a Bleach content creator to have the privilege to promote an official Bleach product that's helping create this video today. That's right, our sponsor today is Bleach Immortal Soul. Bleach Immortal Soul is a new iOS and Android game that has been authorized by the Bleach Animation Production Committee with the original voice acting cast allowing you to play throughout the Bleach story and revisit those moments that we all love and enjoyed in the anime and in the manga, as well as collect your favourite characters from the series. <coughs> Hollow <Hollywood you> go. <coughs> With a battle play that's strategic and requires you to focus on abilities as well as team building to proceed, it showcases just how well the game has been thought out, with a story mode including PvP, battle arena and roguelike, as well as more modes to check out and explore. I was playing the beta just before the official release and I can guarantee that you will surely have a pleasant experience with this title. It will really show how much support we have as a fan base to support titles like this and help it grow and succeed for more content in the future. So let's go and get this game growing. There's a link in the description down below to download the game as well as a code to redeem in-game prizes. So I got you guys as I always do and it would really help and support the game and me as a creator, so please, I really recommend checking out this game and I'm really happy to endorse this Bleach sponsor today. So let's show everyone what this community is truly made of. So go check out Bleach Immortal Souls in the description down below. But back to the video. Number 10, Captain Yamamoto's Last Stand. For the longest time, the Bleach fandom have been interested to see how strong Yamamoto actually is. With his feats making Lieutenant Nanao crash to her feet with Yama's pure spiritual presence, taking Haribel's three actioners and one shot in Ion. Who was bear in mind giving multiple lieutenants a run for their money. We as the fandom have seen a consistency within Yamamoto's strength, while not seeing much of it at the same time. We only got a glimpse of his strength while fighting Aizen by tanking a sword stab and setting up an ability to wipe out an entire city along with his subordinates to get the job done. We have been shown just how merciless Yamamoto can be on the battlefield as well as show how much damage he can take by taking the full brute of his own attack and doing high level 90s Kido without an incantation truly showing us how much of a character Yamamoto is. So when it comes to this blood war battle with the Quincy villain you watch, getting to see a close personal battle full of emotion to the point where he went Bankai gave us, the audience, the chills. And this was in black and white manga panels. If we had this fight with music and animation to drive home to us the impact of each of these destructive attacks, I'm sure it's going to be a moment to break any streaming service, just like how Goku vs Jiren did in Dragon Ball Super. I'm sure many new anime first time watchers are going to be in absolute awe with just not only how destructive this battle will be, but on a psychological and an emotional level too. It will really set the tone for the final arc and give everyone watching the expectation of threat level that Kubo has presented to us. Naturally, I hope that Kubo can allow the studio to delve into some more in canon filler to give us some more backstory between Yamamoto and Yuwachi's past, which will be a treat for manga readers and anime watchers as well. Number 9, Unahana vs Kenpachi. 
it comes to no surprise Compatria has been the ballpark of what people classify as the motherfucking badass character. And anytime Compatria appears on screen, there is already a sense of it's about to go down. Just waiting for a moment for Kampachi to utter a few words already gets people worked up. So when it comes to Kampachi getting a backstory to finally understand and find out why he is the way that he is, is going to be a real treat. But the narration Kubo went for in this interaction, besides trying to learn more about the fundamentals of Onohana's Bankai ability, it will give us a better depiction of what was really going on in the mind of Kubo when envisioning this fight, as well as to see Kampachi get built mentally from the ground up. There was so much different choreography and style that in the manga it could only be taken so far. And when it comes to the idea of shaking an infinite space, the visual representation of this would be great for the anime to solidify the impact. Number 8 Everything But The Rain This comes to no surprise to anyone that when it comes to Bleach's backstories, there is always a 10 out of 10. Understanding the lore and seeing what times were like outside of Ichigo, while at the same time still being about Ichigo, this particular flashback is how Ichigo came to be and how Aizen's explanation on how he knew about Ichigo before he was even born concludes. This flashback fundamentally helps us understand why Ichigo can achieve as many feats as he has as well as getting a huge character development. Which will really strike across the masses of the anime fandom about everything why Ichigo makes sense. Also, the introduction of Hollow Ichigo and White and where they originally came from, and also Masaki Tidi. Need I say more? Number 7 Kurge vs Ichigo. What an insane opening fight to have for a war arc. With most new anime stories, beginning with exposition followed up with overcoming random throwaway characters to get to the more relevant ones, it is not the case for the Thousand Year Blood War arc, because it slaps you right in the face with a sense of urgency and gives our most main cast of characters no chance of evaluating or even resting. The fight in and of itself in question is long and intense. There is a threat and characters we deemed an issue in the past arcs get slapped as if it were flex tape closing an open water leak. If we even remotely get anywhere near animation like Ichigo vs Ginjo for this particular fight, it will shit on My Hero Academia and Black Clover with an expectation of what an anime fight should convey, and I'm really excited to see people's minds blown. Number 6, Kenpachi, of course, vs Gremi. Yes, of course, another Kenpachi fight, and yes, not just because it's Kenpachi, but because of Gremi. Gremi's ability to imagine literally anything is what makes this fight animated to be a treat. We are going to really see the animators of this series flex their creative muscles on this, and I mean, we have guns being shot, lava being spammed, water getting utilised, and of course, it's not a battle without someone throwing a meteor the size of the Soul Society at somebody's head, especially Kampachi's. But wait! It really doesn't end there, because it gets to the point where kamikaze bombs are being thrown and literal space itself is being used as a weapon. From a pure visual perspective, it's going to look ridiculous with all the different styles and colours being used to shine in this fight, and I'm all for it. Number 5, Bambietta vs Kumamura. Besides having a soft spot for the objectively best Quincy girl in Bleach and wanting to see her emotion, this fight is going to be amazing to see how they will handle Kubo's panelling and perspectives. Kumamura's Bankai has always been big and slow to show on screen, but now, because we have a new evolved version of his Bankai, it is very fast and very agile. It's going to be amazing to see this behemoth of a Bankai on screen, showing not only this huge manifestation, but the perspective on size against Bambietta, as she's just casually throwing nuke-sized explosions throughout the Soul Society, seeing not only the damage to her opponent, but the environmental damage as well. I won't go into too much of the context of this fight, it is literally just a complete slugfest of attacks and destruction. Number 4, Ichibe vs Yuach. One of the most chattiest fights in the series. Two experienced old men from the past slugging it out for almost 10 whole chapters. Basically, Bleach's version of Whitebeard vs Gold D. Roger. We're not only getting to see an amazing amount of shit talking to each other with the voice acting that's going to be amazing to hear, but the skills and variations go to cement the skill and experience with both opponents. We get a bunch of new Kido used and the effects that it has on the opponents, and I'm really excited to see how the anime portrays impact when you watch gets literally slapped and crushes his throat in the process. The intensity doesn't stop, and it really goes to show why Ichibei is the protector of the Soul King. 
Number 3. Grim Jow Jagger Jack's Return Kubo really tried to bring Grim Jow back with a sense of surprise, even though everyone knew who this hidden character was. But that's maybe the direction he was going for, because the fans couldn't stop reading for that moment that he would actually be revealed, and to see what he could do. I definitely feel that this will play out well in the anime as well. I can imagine it now, the ending of an episode with a to be continued, showing a certain sword saving Kisuke will definitely get the internet bugging out, and I simply cannot wait. I get goosebumps thinking about the voice actors for Ichigo and Grimjail conversing again and just having general banter. Number 2, Byakia vs Asnode. Now I was hesitant to mention this one as it has quite the controversy. This particular battle was so one sided, but the anime can really flesh out just how gruesome this scene can actually be. This showcases the first invasion of the Ark's villains and it makes the presence known by removing a beloved character. Now whether or not a character should have died here is the controversy, but it will be interesting to see what Kubo and the studio choose to decide to do in that regard. But nonetheless, seeing Byaki get absolutely obliterated in such a bloody fashion is going to really solidify creativity for the fear and intensity from the animator's point of view. And it's going to be really interesting to see how they can make this an already horror-esque scene play out. Of course, number one. It has no introduction, Aizen's return. This really, really needs no introduction as our number one spot. It's Aizen, everybody loves him, everybody needs him. And even though he already appears, we get to see himself raise himself off that goddamn chair and I can picture it now. The animation as spiritual energy pushes and obliterates everything from around him as he calmly tells you watch, welcome to my soul society with literally zero fucks given. This is forever going to be a moment in anime that will forever cement itself into the audience's head. It's not a fight, but just a few words and demeanor alone. What do you think of this list? Do you agree with it? What is your personal list in the comment section down below? Again, if you like this video, hit that like button. Let's get it to a thousand likes. I'll do a top 10 best bleach fights in the Blood War arc that need to be animated, I guess you could say. And I'll also break down what I like about it and why they're as good as they are, even though that's going to be really tough to do. Of course, please support the channel, please hit that like and subscribe, comment down below, help that algorithm, and of course, check out our sponsor for today. But with that being said, I'm going to catch you guys later, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always people, peace out.